Hi everyone, uh, welcome to Talk to Eitan episode 16 and today we have John Lopez. Hello John, how's everything going? Hi buddy, I'm good, thanks. Great. Uh, thanks thank for having me. You. Yeah, thank you for joining me on the show, especially uh, on, on your day off. Um, and uh, like, uh, like always, uh, like to introduce people. Uh, yeah, where are you based, John? I'm based in East London, Barking Riverside. So that's um, County of Essex. Okay. And and uh, have you have you always lived there? Have you always lived in? Uh, no, I used I originally was grew up in Islington, so near Angel, Hackney Way, North London, that sort of way. Um, I've been living in Barking for about say eight months now. Okay. Do you, you prefer living there to to North London? I mean, it has its ups and downs. Like around here, it's really quiet and it's really nice and chilled out if you want to like finish work and then come home and then you've got like a nice little chilled vibe. But then you've got Islington now and North London where I grew up where you've got so many shops and you've got a nice little vibe and you've got a nice little feel to it. So it's, I don't know, I feel like in between. You're never really fully happy wherever you are, I think. So it's you think good. Do you think it's a bit greener there? Is there a bit more open space of walking side? There is, there is a lot more space, but it's, I wouldn't mm. say it's greener. I'd say yeah. it's a lot more industrial. Uh, there's a lot okay. of factories. Yeah, there's a lot really? of factories around okay. here, and um, yeah, I think they're all turning in. They're turning them into flats and houses. So, yes, yeah, it's, uh, it's all right. It's not bad. And and uh, what what is it you do? What's what's your occupation? I work in construction, so I do groundworks. I work with a lot of heavy machinery and a lot of dirty work. That's what I do. So you probably, I like, are you pretty much exhausted like every, every day from over you? Like, if you, as it built up your kind of, not immune, but just your resilience, your like physical resilience to everything? Over the 100%. Years. Yeah. Yeah, 100%, 100%. It, it, it definitely does, especially when you go gym and then you have to go to work like i finish some days and i'm just knackered i'm just shattered i'm in bed by eight o'clock really wow eight o'clock <laughs> what time yeah. do you wake up what time do you wake up i wake up four four o'clock oh wow so yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you do take it to the next level yeah it's not even five it's four wow okay yeah i wake up four o'clock uh sometimes three thirty, and i'm in the gym for four thirty four. uh i work up for an hour and a half to maybe Two hours sometimes, get home, get ready, shower, and go to work. Wow. Okay. So that, there's, there's quite a lot of discipline there. Then you probably have to like kind of uh, be, you know, go prepare your days quite well. Like, do you have to like pre pre prepare your food and all that kind of stuff? Yeah, yeah. Of course. I, obviously, when I get to work, I prepare my meals for for when I'm in for when I'm at work, so I don't slack too much going to the shop and getting chicken and chips or <laughs> getting all that all that naughty stuff that don't help. Um, so yeah, I prepare my meals in, in the evening, and yeah, I get everything ready pretty much for the day. How many, how many calories do you eat a day? Of interest, or I'd like to say I'm on a calor caloric deficit, but I'm not. Yeah. I've not really counted. I've not really ever like actually tracked my macronutrients. Yeah, but um, I, it's clean, cleanish enough. I'd say it's flexible, so it's more sustainable as well. I don't like to be too, too, too strict because then I know I'm just going to end up sidetracking and not and going off my routine. Yeah, the reason why I asked you that is because you're probably burning quite a lot of calories every day, right? <sighs> yeah, yeah, a ton. A ton, yeah. Yeah, yeah so like uh, you probably want to be careful, you know, because you want to build muscle. You just want to be careful not to kind of, uh, uh, you probably need, you might struggle to eat enough rather than too little. I know you just said you're on a calor calorific uh, deficit, but uh do you, do you not feel that sometimes you, you may not be eating enough because of all the calories you're burning or you don't don't see it that way i, f I feel like um i've adapted to the diet i have uh, but it's it's difficult because i don't really because when i eat too much even if it's good stuff i kind of feel a bit bloated interesting and i okay. feel like a bit heavy and groggy but when i feel like i'm on a like just enough food like i'll have like fruits or snack on or or maybe like some rye crackers something really light and dry um you know that will stick to my routine 
I feel okay. But normally I just tend to snack on a fruit, like an apple or a banana or, and that will keep me going and then maybe just hydrate myself with some water or some coconut water. Well, like you said, the, the body adapts. So, you know, knows how to consolidate, um, you know, the fat stores and, you know, your, your metabolism probably slows down a little bit because of all the work you're doing uh, rather than speeding up. So that's the, uh, that's the beautiful thing about the human body is it adapts to your environment. So, you know, even, even though you're doing a lot of heavy work and stuff, which is, uh, which is always very interesting to me, you know, how like I'm saying to you, you should be eating more and you're saying, actually, not really, I'm fine. So this shows you how like the body can adapt, you know, under a lot of stress. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course, absolutely. Yeah absolutely um yeah i just feel like for me the b- biggest challenge is like getting enough sleep sometimes uh, like having deep sleep interesting yeah 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 um so that that, that comes into the to the next stage is um how did you yeah how did you get involved how did you find frod how did you what made you want to look for it like or maybe you weren't looking for it just something maybe you're inspired by something What's the journey from that? Um, I was just scrolling on my Instagram as I normally do. I wasn't really looking for a um, hormone supplement or a hormone um, build up to build me up. I was just scrolling on my feed, found an advert of of Farhan uh, talking about testosterone. I was like, well, what's this about? I didn't really know what to expect because it was quite scientific and it was quite detailed. Mm. Uh, in what he was explaining so I, I went through the whole video and then I was like hold on a minute this guy knows his stuff he knows what he's talking about and he's obviously qualified so then I didn't get it straight away I gave it up maybe a week or two and then I bought my first bottle and then that was it I started taking Afro-D and then obviously in the beginning you don't really feel much you don't really feel what well, for a lot of people you don't really some people are different but for me I didn't really feel results straight away but now it's absolutely amazing it's crazy like I have it in the morning I raw dog it so basically I, I take it out of the capsules because I enjoy it that way better and I just get some water neck it down just before I go to the gym and I just completely smash my workouts and especially waking up so early in the morning yeah you don't really feel like doing a workout. But once you've taken Afro D, for me personally, I just feel like a rocket in a gym. Literally, I just feel like some drive. I feel energy, I feel focused, and I just smash out the workout and I just go to work. And it's the best feeling ever. Tell me, so you said you actually take the the powder out of the capsules. That Do you take it like... Oh, you prefer that yeah. way, yeah? You like, you prefer the hit, the direct hit from it? Yeah, I prefer the hit, yeah. I just mm. prefer feeling it through my veins straight yeah, away it, first it, thing it, in the morning. Yeah, it's, it's something you never forget, that hit, that first hit, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That first hit. Um, so um, how long have you taken it for so far? How long has it been? This is, my, this is, I think, my second bottle. I've got it all in my calendar, uh, but this is probably just an estimate. I probably think I've been on Afro Leaf now for, say month and a half and so far like from from the beginning what kind of results so you mentioned like dry focus um you know smashing workouts uh like what what kind of results uh did you first feel when you first started taking it and how and now from like from you first started it till up till now like the journey I so think, far i feel like the the results that i've gained from afro d have been quite similar in the beginning obviously they were a lot milder like a lot a lot less obvious but um, when I used to take it I was taking a capsule full capsule so it was obviously taking a lot longer to mm. for me to feel a result um but I think like from when I first started I felt lots of energy in the beginning from taking the capsule so I do a workout and I feel like loads and loads of energy but ever since I started taking the powder out of the capsule I'm not recommending anyone doing that I'm just saying for me that's that's what works better it's immediate like wake it wakes me up and also another little thing that I do is I mix a little bit of cayenne pepper into my water oh so a little bit of cayenne pepper and that again it stimulates me and it wakes me up first thing in the morning and it obviously helps with fat burn so that's why I love doing it because it's helped me lose 
quite a few pounds of love handles and stuff. So oh. that's why I do it. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much so far. It's it's just the amount of energy, and just, I just feel stronger. I just feel a lot stronger. I just feel I just feel um, really good doing it. Yeah, and it's only been two months, right? So you know, like we always give, we always tell people, you know, at least. Uh, three months is a really good measurement so let's let's see how you are in the next four to five weeks it's like the, the next the next stage and then uh and then and then onwards and upwards three months six months uh, yeah absolutely yeah absolutely there's gonna, there's gonna be there's gonna be more to come for sure and uh you said you mentioned you go to gym what, what, what kind of training are you doing like i like mixing it up i used to back in the day i used to do a lot of calisthenics so a lot of body weight training a lot of natural like sort of stuff just just at home, home routine workouts. But now I really, because I'm recovered, I've recovered from some injuries that I had previously from knee injuries that were really, really bad when my early 20s and mid 20s. And now in my 30s, I've kind of healed my knees to a really good level. So I've started doing some heavy weight training, like some heavy weighted, heavy weights and stuff. So I combine my training. Some days I'll do heavy weights and other days I'll do calisthenics. Or some days I'll just mix them up both. So if I'm doing chest, I'll do like chest press. I'll do some bench press and then I'll do push-ups as well. And I'll do some dips. If I'm doing back, I'll do some machine work, like some lap pull downs. And then I'll do some pull-ups with that as well. Um, yeah, so I just like mixing it all up. I like really being different with my workouts. I like trying new things, challenging things and just making my workouts crazy. But what's interesting is you, so you, do you work out on an empty stomach? That's right. Ah, very interesting. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And have you actually experimented with eating first and you've just found that it's better this way? Oh yeah, absolutely. I've, I've not, I wouldn't say I've experimented, but obviously being younger and like being training on and off my whole life, I used to eat before and then go to train. Um, and I've experimented a lot with fasting as well. So fasting the entire day and then uh -huh. going to train. Yeah. And I found that when I do that, that regimen, which is really difficult to do now because my, my schedule is just very, is very heavy. So I just can't do it. I can, but it's really going to be really challenging. So my work is very demanding. So I'm not mm. able to do it. Um, but when I was doing, when I was working in a different, different job, I was fasting the entire day for about, say, 16 hours a day. And then I'd go to the gym after work and I was, I was having the best workouts ever. That like I would literally, I wouldn't say my testosterone was really high because I, I never really measured it. But strength-wise and focus-wise, I was, I was a beast. I was like some of the, in the, some of the, I would say I was in like one of my best shapes I've ever been in while I was doing that and I think I did it for about three months and then obviously I got really good results and like a lot of people you just sort of fall off and mm. you lose focus and you just party and stuff and then you just don't have that consistency if that makes sense yeah no that 100% makes sense um just, just out of interest what, what are your goals what are your health and fitness goals at the moment because they're, they're probably changing um, the time so yeah absolutely um at the moment I just just to get stronger to get stronger to get leaner um and obviously be as healthy as I can possible in terms of internally but yeah to increase endurance I think is one of them to increase my endurance increase stamina um get my T levels up obviously to mm. really really high being at one percent club um yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Just obviously like most men, just be shredded, like just be really shredded and really strong. I'm not really interested in like lots of size and lots of like mass. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, I'm, fine enough. Actually, I'm very similar as well. Like my, my goal is basically just to be be strong and lean and toned. Yeah. As, le as less, yeah. But it's, it's probably the, I'd say it's probably, in my opinion, the most sustainable thing to do because, you know, uh, as we get much older, it becomes harder to, be big yeah <laughs> you know it doesn't look, always look like yeah flexible yeah, yeah. you're right 100 yeah flexible yeah that's uh, one of my biggest challenges <laughs> flexibility yeah that uh takes a lot of time a lot yeah. of time and a lot of training yeah 100 yeah definitely what would, you, what would you say what would your um 
uh, message be to, because, you know, it's very interesting that you wake up, because I, I don't know many people wake up at 4 a.m. and go to sleep at 8 p.m. It's, uh, you're probably very unusual. You're probably like in the thousands <laughs> that do that probably. What, what mm. kind of, how would someone who, uh, in your opinion, has problems uh, getting into like a sort of structured routine, um, you know, isn't it, is it a 30s guy like you? Uh, like us because i'm also in my 30s what would you say like what kind of message would you give to that kind of guy uh to get into a structured routine like like you are like going going to getting up at 4 a.m 8 p.m like what, what's the secret behind it how, how have you managed to achieve that hmm. um you just have to fight for me personally like i've always been in and out of routines and in and out of healthy routine and then i just sort of fall off um I don't know like it's you just have to find what works for you and for some people like the reason why I do 4am is because I have children I have a kid and I have a missus ah. so I finish work I don't have the time to work out in the evenings that like when I was single so I, I was thinking to myself what can work for me now what can work for me now what can I do different to get my workout in to be on my fitness journey and to have time for family so for me it's just a personal thing of like find what works for you find like if you don't have a family or you do have a family but you have the time because maybe you finish work early or it all depends on the individual really you know so basically what you're saying is you've been forced to adapt you've been forced to adapt right. to the situation right interesting okay. that's right yeah okay so uh i guess it's kind of like a willpower right you just like, you, you just want to, you just have, you know, you just decided you want to work out, you want to be in good shape and this is the only way to do it. Yeah. And, and I feel like, yeah, yeah, a lot of messages from like, um, from that army guys and really structured individuals, they, they wake up early hours, 4am they say early bird catches the worm and all that sort of stuff. So I wanted to challenge myself. I wanted to see what would happen if I, push myself and it's really difficult I'm not going to lie to you it's really hard especially some days you just wake up and you're literally still asleep yeah and then I just take I take Afro D and then it literally runs through me within 30 seconds and I'm literally I'm literally up ready to go get in my car drive to the gym and it's amazing some days it takes even longer some days I get to the gym and I start working out and I, I, I don't actually want to be there and then you literally just you force yourself through the workout. Yeah, it's uh, like, you know, everyone is different. Um, uh, there are there are like other factors involved, but uh, yeah, that's that's kind of, you know, as long as your as long as your digestion, as long as your gut is, uh, you haven't got too much food in your gut. The herbs will work straight away. Sure, that's that's the key. Yeah. So, which is why yeah. prob this is probably why you're getting such a good workout because empty stomach, uh, you're getting that, that absolute drive straight away. Um, yeah, so like, like um, lastly, did you actually manage to do any blood tests at the end? Or are you still waiting? I actually haven't, to be honest. Um, I haven't actually found um, the time or actually haven't taken the time out to, sure. to call my GP and, and get some blood work done. I, I want to do it. I just, I don't know. I've just not really been, just been focusing on other things and just 100%. haven't really done it. 100%. I haven't yeah, really yeah. come around. I, I should do it, to be honest, or I know where my mark is. And obviously, it's not been a perfect journey either. So if I, I feel like if I do do the blood work and I get the feedback on it, I feel like I could now target my health and my goals a lot better, like be more laser focused on the areas where need work, if that makes sense. Yeah, I mean... So yeah, that's, that's definitely the next goal. Yeah, I mean, just, just for people watching this, uh, you know, like, obviously, you know, you can't fault the feeling of Afro D and, and what it's doing to you. But of course, it does. Uh, the, the only real way of knowing what's going on in the body is by doing the blood test for sure. And then you can kind of uh, get much more specific with kind of uh, achieving all your goals, you know, because sometimes certain things can be out. and You don't always know. And the only way to know is by blood tests. But um, look, it's good. Yeah. You, you'll get there eventually. It's, uh, it's all well. Uh, well. John, thanks very much for the, the talk and uh, we'll definitely have another chat again and uh, you know, make sure you get to that thousand club like everyone, <laughs> like the few, like the, uh, the tens and 
the tens of, of men that have managed to get there because a lot of guys are still like they're very close to it but not quite there yet uh yeah. and otherwise yeah great well it's a uh, very nice chat with you and uh to be continued yeah phase. no thank you for thank you for your time and thanks for the interview it's no problem nice. speak to you soon john take care take care bye-bye bye-bye